Um, yeah, so uh, I, I, re I realized in, in working through this chapter that I went, went a little out of bounds uh, when presenting last chapter in the sense that I, I, I think I anticipated a lot of this chapter. And uh, but I guess the trouble is that it feels like kind of quotation is maybe too small of a topic to my sense to, to be the subject of just one chapter uh, uh, and an evaluation kind of only makes sense with, along with quotation. Um, anyway, hopefully a lot of the things that I said last week will make a little bit more sense now, uh, this week. Um, to start off, I, I guess I kind of wanted to give a little bit of an overview of, of what, what evaluation is, um, kind of, or rather what this chapter hopes to communicate about evaluation. So, you know, at the outset, um, this chapter really kind of poses, at least to my reading, uh, some of the, like the problems of evaluation in R and then um, introduces a few concepts uh, for us uh, as aspiring advanced R users on how to uh, address those, those problems. Um, so the problems, the problems of, uh, of evaluation are really kind of, you know, point almost to the like fundamental what evaluation is. So evaluation fundamentally is just resolving a reference um, to, to something. Um, and and, and and so um, actually maybe this will be better. Da, 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 evaluation twenty better. Okay, good. Um, so basically, fundamentally, evaluation is is just at a very high level. It's just kind of resolving a reference, right? So if you have um, uh, and importantly, it's resolving a reference, you know, to a symbol or, or an expression that's defined in an environment. You know, so as we're working interactively uh, in, in the console uh, or in our studio, typically, you know, our R is going to be looking up the reference to, you know, a variable, a data frame in the global environment. But when we're working with functions, things may change. The environment that we want to use may, uh, uh, the environment we want to use to evaluate a particular reference may be different than the global environment, right? Um, and, and, and in R, uh, as we'll see, you know, if oftentimes if the, if the, if the environment's not explicitly provided, it's assumed. Um, uh, but, uh, or if it's explicitly provided, then it's, then it's, then it's uh, resolved in that, that context. So for example, if I have some variable X, the variable X may, uh, and let's say I'm working with a data frame. So I want to perform some operation referring to X. Um, suddenly I have some ambiguity about which X I mean uh, as someone who's composing code. Do I mean the X that's in the global environment or do I mean the X that's in the quote unquote data environment? So that's within the data frame. Uh, and somehow we need to have tools that help, help resolve that, that ambiguity. Uh, and, and the chapter talks about two. Um, uh, without, I think it nicely exposes kind of the, 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 the problems and how these tools resolve those problems. Um, although maybe not going into too much detail by application, although there's some nice little kind of motivating applications uh, throughout the, the chapter. Uh, so the first, the first, uh, the first kind of topic is is uh, or the first element of solution is is closures, uh, and closures. Um, uh, it, it's kind of a um, what are they called? A portmanteau. Uh, this is like a, it's kind of like a, a two two words. It's like a closure um, that that's that's quoted. Right, uh, so it's kind of the two things together. So it's a quoted expression and 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 an environment um, that's needed for its evaluation. Hence the hence the closure, um, and uh, that's that's kind of tool number one, um, and uh, kind of tool number two is 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 the data mask. So if if we're working kind of in particular with with the data frame, um, we need some ability to resolve. Uh, Sorry, just one second. Sorry, my, my daughter popped in. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and and the, second, the second kind of element of solution is a data mask, uh, which kind of helps us explicitly uh, resolve this, this ambiguity. Uh, when we're referring, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, kind of an X, if, 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 a, if a, 
an object X exists uh, in, in the global environment and object X also, you know, column X also exists in the data frame, then we need some ability to, to, to basically point um, R to which quote unquote environment to use when evaluating that reference, right? Is it the global environment or is it the, as I call it, the data, the data environment or the data frame, right? So let's start, before we kind of dive into each one of the tools, uh, let's do as the book does and kind of go through some of the evaluation basics. Uh, so here, basically the principles. Um, so if, if we if we have some, uh, you know, let's imagine we have this object X, which we give the value, we assign the value 10. We're going to quote it with expra um, from, from last week. Um, and then we're going to evaluate it. So this is, eval is a, is a base, uh, base R function. Uh, and so as we expect, we're going to get 10. So we're, we're, we're quoting X and then unquoting X. So naturally we get 10. Uh, let's have a, like a marginally more complicated example where uh, we now want to, to quote, quote and evaluate X plus Y. Now we provide Y, uh, you know, we define Y. So these two things would kind of be in the same global environment. Uh, and naturally we get as a result 12. So, uh, you know, we quote 10 plus, or sorry, X plus Y. So we quote that and then we evaluate that. So that resolves to kind of 10 plus two equals, equals 12. Here you'll note that we haven't provided an environment. And so naturally R assume, uh, assumes an environment, which is the global environment. So this reference to X and reference to Y, the search path kind of you know, leads it to, to find X and Y in, in, in the global environment. Uh, where where objects by those name those names are found, um, but we can also specify a particular environment for for R to use when it's when it's um, evaluating the expression. Um, just sorry, just one second. Again. Sorry. Um, yeah, and, and so, so we can here, we can provide, you know, we can provide, uh, a, we can specify an environment. Um, so here, you know, just kind of make this a self-contained example. I'm defining, uh, so we're, we're gonna, gonna, gonna again quote and unquote uh, X plus Y as an expression. Uh, just to make this a self-contained example, you know, I'm defining Y again as two, the same as above. Um, and, uh, and then I'm, I'm providing an environment. So basically, I, you know, I'm not pointing, pointing to an environment that exists, but I'm kind of like composing an environment on the fly that consists of an object X with the value 1000. Uh, so here then, um, you'll notice that when we evaluate this expression, so we, we quote this, we provide an environment for um, the expression to be evaluated. And when we evaluate this expression in that environment, um, uh, um, then, then we get the result is, is 1002. So here in the environment, in this environment, Y is not defined. So basically we kind of look in another environment and find uh, Y defined here, but X is defined in that, in that environment. So R takes that value of X. And uh, as, as a consequence, we have this 1002 as, as, as the result. Um, any questions so far? Okay, um, if um, I'll just move on, but if there are any questions that, that pop up, thanks, thanks for the thumbs up. Um, if there are any questions, do, do chime in. Um, so kind of, uh, there's a nice example, there are a couple of nice examples that come up in this section. Um, and here, I've I, I just kind of taken one straight from the book, which I thought was, was a nice, uh, nice example um of uh you know imagining that we rewrote the the function source you know for you know in r we're going to use source to source a to source a a, a, a kind of like a a, a a script file um and, and then basically execute execute the functions that are contained within um i mean kind of think about this from first principles in terms of what happens you know with with or what might happen um or what um or what we could do basically with the knowledge we have so um, kind of as an overview, I'll go over this step by step, but let's imagine a source really, we're just dealing with a file that's kind of, we treat from our perspective as simply, you know, a set of character strings. Um, uh, and then those character strings need to be evaluated uh, as the expressions that they are. And then uh, R needs to return those results. So those are kind of the three big steps, you know, kind of uh, uh, 
uh, take the file, read in the file as character strings, parse the content, and then evaluate the content. So with all that in mind, let's kind of look into this, this function that we kind of, we create called source to. Um, you know, to be clear, source is more complicated than, than this, but I think the major moves are more or less translated here. So uh, let's have a function uh, that specifies a path where the file can be found. Um, and then let's have, uh, let's have an environment um, in which, you know, basically the, the, the expressions found in the file be evaluated. Uh, and we'll use uh, the, the Rlang caller environment. So basically what this does is um, when the function is, is called, um, Rlang searches and finds the name of the environment uh, in which the function is called. So we'll use that environment um, to evaluate um, for, for evaluation. Uh, so move number one, uh, we're going to read the script from disk. So nothing really uh, new here. So it's just using the read lines function. Um, and yeah, just using the read lines function, um, generating kind of a, 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 like a good character vector of expressions. Um, then the next thing that we're doing, uh, this is an, an Rlang function uh, called parse, parse expres. Uh, I've actually used this a few times. Um, uh, myself. Uh, so basically, we are we're taking we're taking this uh, uh, kind of character string from that we've gotten from the source file, uh, and then we're evaluating the we're evaluating those expressions. Um, uh, so we'll end up we'll end up with this function. We'll have a list of expressions uh, that are going to be stored in this this uh, this object expra, uh, and then the last step. Is to is to resolve, uh, or sorry, is to evaluate each one of these uh, each one of these expressions read from disk uh, as an R expression. So what we're going to do is we're just going to loop through them with a kind of simple for loop. Um, you know, initially we're going to have the result this object set to null, uh, and then we're going to gradually uh, evaluate each one of these. Um, so we're Going to evaluate each each uh, each element in the list of expressions, um, you know, specifying the expression. So taking the ith expression um, uh, right here, and and then using the environment. And this environment again for reference is the caller the caller environment, the environment from which this uh, in which this function is called. Um, and then we're you know each one of these each one of these lines. Uh, at least as by my reading, uh, is, is going to yield, basically we're going to have a, a list of results, right? Uh, and then the last kind of bit is we're going to return those, those results invisibly to, to the caller, to the caller environment. So this is kind of a case where it's useful, you know, for uh, in R to kind of, to, to specify the environment uh, of, uh, um, uh, in which we want to kind of evaluate these things. And that kind of maps to what we want to do with source, right? So the source, if you're sourcing some file, we want all of all of the references that are made in the source file to kind of objects that exist to be evaluated, um, you know, in, in, in the environment in which uh, we are um, sourcing the file, right? Any questions? Uh, let me move on now to, to closures. Um, uh, so again, you know, what, what are closures? Again, it's a strange, it's kind of strange name. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, it's simply just a data structure that consists of two pieces. Piece number one is an expression, uh, importantly, a quoted expression. So it's not evaluated. Um, and then secondly, an environment. Um, uh, an environment in which evaluation of the expression needs to be done. Uh, so first, let's see how we would create such an expression. We'll just use this as a very simple, even silly example. Uh, this object foo will have a function um, that takes in that takes in um, an argument x uh, and then quotes x, um, and then obviously we'll get we'll get basically a quoter as a result. So let's take our function foo um, uh, and then pass it x plus a. And you'll see here that we have, uh, you know, princess to the consoles, we have a quotient uh, that consists, as we said above, of two pieces. Uh, piece number one, expression. Piece number two, environment. So the expression is this quoted piece, uh, expra. Um, 
a, a plus B. Um, I don't recall if it said this explicitly in the book, but I, if I'm not mistaken, we, this little kind of carrot that appears at the beginning, uh, I, I think you're kind of can read that as this is a quoted expression, if I'm not mistaken, but I, I could be wrong on that point. Um, uh, it's, you know, don't, don't take it as like, um, like a regex carrot or something like that. Um, and then the environment. So here, since we're, we're, we're executing this in, in, in the global environment, the, uh, the environment in which we're evaluating it is, is, is the global environment, but you could easily imagine we could have other, other environments that are, that are passed to this. So that's on creating a closure. Um, really, uh, you know, our lane provides us, and actually here I should have provided the, the namespace. Uh, so this is an R link function. Um, th this is the equivalent um, uh, of, of uh, in expra uh, for quoting an expression. So in expra gives us a quoted expression, in quo gives us, uh, gives us a quotient. Um, uh, and the quotient, you know, again, we'll have the quoted expression plus, plus the, the environment. The, it's kind of a convenient, in a certain sense, a convenience function. Uh, whereas, you know, with expra, in expra, we, we would get, um, if I'm not mistaken, you, you would get uh, the expression. Um, here, you get the closure, which consists of, you know, two things, an environment, with, um, and then the, the expression. So that's on creating. Uh, let's move on to evaluating. Uh, so there's another, uh, again, I should have provided the, the namespace for this. I just quickly copied from, from the book. Uh, you know, let's look to, like, evaluating the expressions. Um, so there's a function here where you can kind of provide these two pieces uh, and, and kind of compose by hand the the, the expression uh, the quotient rather um, this new quotient function. Um, uh, so you can provide an expression, a quoted expression, uh, and then an environment for its evaluation. Um, that'll create uh, that'll create the quotient, right? So that's kind of step number one. There's a little bit of a novel piece here. Uh, but you again, you're you're providing the two components: express, quoted expression, and environment. Uh, the environment providing us kind of the where to look for the 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 definitions of the objects referenced in the expression. Uh, and then this last bit again, an Arlang function, which is which is tidy tidy eval. Um, so you know, in contrast, kind of to to the eval function, it provides a little bit better handling of a lot of these uh, these tools for. For, uh, for, for tidy evaluation for the quasi quotation and, and, and evaluation. Um, yeah, that's that's it on the uh, that's it on the evaluation. And sorry, regrettably, I didn't I didn't really get much further with the quotes because again we got the Thanksgiving holidays coming up in the U.S. So I think uh, in the absence of some good notes, I'm just going to walk us through walk us through some of the book, which which I've I've, I've read but didn't regrettably have much of a chance to kind of uh, uh, walk. Um, to go through, um, so that that's it on in, on on evaluating uh, the the rest of the the chapter. I have to say, kind of goes into some some nitty gritty detail that I didn't go into very much myself. Uh, the one section that I, I I guess I won't have time to unpack, but maybe might be worth looking at in, in further detail is this dots uh, dots part. Um, so um, basically, it's kind of pointing out that. If you have some function where you're quoting the dots, you need some additional tools in order to kind of like strip, well, uh, re resolve resolve the references to each one of the the names in in, in the dots potentially, right? Um, and, and where, well, for example, if you have you know argument one, argument two, argument three uh, in a function, it may be that you want to have different environments uh, for each one of the the the, the arguments. Well, for each argument, you'll have an expression. Each one of those arguments, uh, the expression may need to be evaluated in a different environment. So argument, arguments one and two, you may want to have, diff, you may want those expressions to be evaluated in different arguments. So this goes into a bit of a detail about, about, that, about that case. Um, that's kind of it on, 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 on closures. Um, I don't know if there, maybe I'll, I'll stop here and see if there are any questions on closures. See Federica shaking her head. So <clears throat> none for me. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, and then the last uh, the, kind of the, the last kind of major section is is is, is really about uh, the the data masks. Um, and here again, the the the, the, the central idea is that 
um, you've you've whenever you have a function that's dealing with um, like a an object like a like a data frame that contains uh, kind of sub elements, you can have ambiguities in reference uh, where uh, you may want to perform some operation um, and and you're you're trying to evaluate an expression referring to x that object x could exist in a few places it, it could exist in the let's say the global environment as well as it could exist in the object itself on which you're trying to perform an operation and so then you have this ambiguity from ours perspective or just really in general but from ours perspective in particular about which x are you are you referring to is it the x is it the environment X or is it the data X? Um, so that's kind of the general problem that's 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 posed here. And uh, you know, tidy tidy evaluation has has thankfully provided us some some tools um, that that basically allow us to um, resolve that that reference problem. Um, that's a little bit the overview. Let's kind of go again. Let's kind of go through the basics and then we'll maybe look at one of the applications together to kind of. Put a little bit of flesh on on the kind of skeleton of an idea. Um, so let's let's first create create a closure here. So uh, where we have um, you know expra x. So we're going to evaluate the expression x times y, and and we're going to pass an environment where x is defined as one hundred. So this looks very similar to what we saw in the last section. So we're creating this closure. The only difference is here, um, we are, um, we are, um, pardon me, we are setting y uh, equal, equal to, well, we're basically making a data frame um, uh, where it's just kind of the elements one to one to 10, right? Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to, what we, what we want to do is we want to resolve resolve this this thing right so x x is defined as a hundred uh, and then we've got this this uh, this this data frame so we're going to use tidy eval tidy eval or say this eval tidy which is again the Arlang uh, mechanism for the kind of equivalent of, of the base function eval uh, so we're going to evaluate this closure so basically the way these things work is, that you have sort of the, the 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 closure expression right here plus the data you want to pass to it, uh, and in our case the data um, the data is the data frame, uh, and the way that this gets resolved is that we end up multiplying each element uh, each row of uh, of the data frame by by ten right so here we would have a data frame uh, called you know df with a column y whose values are from first row to last row one, all the way to 10, uh, we're multiplying each element by 10. So naturally we get 102, right? So we get, we get this kind of number stream, right? Um, another way that you could kind of rewrite this, maybe to make it a little clearer what's going on is you can have this, this function called with two, uh, a function that takes two arguments, takes a data argument and an expression argument. Um, for the expression argument, um, uh, it takes the expression and then it it uh, it turns it into a, a quotient, um, and then and then the second step is we evaluate the quotient, and then the data is being passed to the function. So in a certain sense, we're kind of taking this general flow here and transforming it into a function. To prove that that's what we're doing, let's take the take this function and then and then evaluate it. So let's uh, define x. Uh, as as a hundred, right? And then we'll invoke, we'll call the function with two. So first argument is the data argument. So this is going to be our data frame that we created previously. This data frame with a single column y, uh, you know, values one to ten. Uh, and then the expression that we're passing it. So this is like a bare expression, right? Um, is x times y. Right. And so then what what R is going to do is again, it's going to say, okay, well, where is X defined? Um, and it's going to, it's going to, you know, the only place where it's defined is is the is, is here uh, in the global environment is 100. And then Y is, is defined in, in the data frame. So again, we're going to get the, the same thing as as before. Um, 
Right. So that's a little bit for the um, for the uh, the kind of the basics of of the of the data mask. Um, so you can see here we're kind of endeavoring to. Well, actually, I can say like right here we're not. It seems like we're not really exactly providing complete unambiguity about about the reference, but it, it kind of works out because of our, our simplistic examples. Um, let's kind of dive into one of the applications. The subset one is the one that came across most clearly to me. So I guess uh, with that in mind, I'll, I'll present it to you. Um, so, you know, let's just have some simple data frame where um, we're gonna have, you know, columns A, B, and C and columns A, B, and C are defined as follows. So, you know, you're going to have you know, one through five, five through one, and then C is going to be five, three, one, four, two, right? Uh, and what we're going to want to do is, is uh, you know, just as kind of a reminder, you have this base function called called sub uh, subset um, that's uh, that that'll do kind of like um, dplyr filter, right? Uh, where you provided a data frame and, and an expression, and then it then it returns the data set that, that you that you want, right? And it's the equivalent for, for these expressions that would be really written in base base R. So the idea here is, you know, with the knowledge we have, let's let's try to write, let's kind of rewrite subset two. We know what it does basically, uh, but with the tools we we have now. Um, so here, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create this this function subset two as two arguments, the data, um, and then an expression for kind of which rows to to evaluate. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is kind of step number one is we're we're going to take this rows this rows expression, um, and we're going to we're going to, to to quote it. So it's a single expression, um, and we're going to create a quotient, right? Uh, if it were multiple you know, if we wanted to allow for like multiple, then that'd be in quos, Q-U-O-S, uh, since that's kind of a plural variant, but here, you know, we're going to assume it's singular. Um, and then what we're going to do uh, is we're going to use this eval tidy. Uh, so where we have a quotient and then a data thing. And this is going to basically give us the, the like the row, the row indexes uh, of the, the rows that we, we want to show. So this is going to resolve to like a true or, true or false, um, basically. Uh, and um, for each each row, like if 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 this expression is true for, for the data, then we're going to get a true. If not, we're going to get a false. And just as a quick check, we'll just have this, this kind of stop if not to make sure that indeed this, this evaluates to, this is a logical value. Um, and then last last step is we're going to call, call upon our, our uh, our you know subsetting operation from base R, or just take the data that we we pass to this this function, um, and then um, we'll select those those rows where where you know we have a we'll select those rows where the the expression evaluates the the expression the, this expression rows evaluates is true, and then drop those that where it evaluates the false. So just to see that this works, let's let's kind of look at the results. So we'll, you know, subset two, take our sample data set, and then we'll find those rows where B is equal to C. And then you know we'll print out to the console the data frame, the resulting data frame, and indeed we find you know where B is equal to C, where it's you know uh, uh, where both are equal to five, where both are equal equal to one. Um, so it's kind of interesting here that we can we can kind of uh, kind of resolve this ambiguity. Um, by evaluating this rows, you know, within the context of, of the data frame, right? So first we're, we're kind of we're quoting it, um, and then we're we're basically providing it a context for its evaluation. And the context is this data argument. So we're kind of evaluating the expression in the context of, of the data, so that these references uh, to to the you know like B and C, we're not looking to something in the global environment. We're looking to something that exists within the data. Right, so we're, we're evaluating it um, uh, within, you know, within this, 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 the context of the data, um, if it exists. Uh, and then we're kind of getting back the thing that we, we wanted. Um, yeah, since I guess there's more time, maybe uh, if, if there's interest, we could kind of work through 
uh, you know, a few more of these applications or, 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 or else we can kind of open it up to questions. I, I, I've gone kind of quickly through this, this chapter because I, I feel like we try, we went over some of this material last time. Um, and here I'm trying to think where it talks explicitly. Oh, okay, about the, yeah, this is great. So the, I mentioned the, the pronouns. Um, let's come back to the pronouns, actually. It's a step that we, we skipped over and actually the, the applications didn't make use of the pronouns, but, you know, within the tidy evaluation, I guess I'll call it framework um, uh, or, um, or philosophy. Uh, and in, in any event, we, we have these tools. The, so, so in a lot of the, the documentation, you'll, you'll see these referred to as pronouns. Um, uh, basically, that helps us resolve this, 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 this ambiguity about kind of the scope of reference or uh, you know, where to look for the, re the reference of a particular object. Uh, so we have these these two these two pronouns exist this dot data and then dot env so uh, a data basically is it a data variable or is it an environment variable right um, so here you know if you kind of recall these well here's like a nice self-contained example let's you know have x equal to one here we'll have a data frame where x equals to two so here we have you know collision of names, right? X in the global environment, X in the data environment, let me call it. And we have our, remember, we have our with, with two, uh, with two um, um, uh, uh, function, uh, which basically kind of mu multiplies, uh, multiplies the column of the data frame by some value, right? Uh, the, the, the were, so we've got the data and then we've got some, um, uh, how do you call it? Uh, um, sorry, uh, we got we got some data, and then we've got value, some um, value, back, uh, value in the environment. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, maybe for reference, even for me, so I was starting as I was reading, and I got sidetracked. So I was starting to have some doubts about whether I had properly recalled this with two. So maybe for for memory. So we've got the with two is a function that has arguments of data and expression. We're taking the expression, we're quoting the expression, and then we're evaluating the evaluating the uh, the expression within um, the context of the data. That's that's the well take away. Come back to the pronouns then. Uh, so with two, we've got a data argument, which is the data frame in both cases, and then we have the expression. Um, so this is an expression, which is the data X, um, and then it's returning the column two. I'm a little bit puzzled by this result. Maybe I, I misunderstood with two earlier, but any, anyway, like the point is here, this is referring to the data X, which is equal to two. Uh, and this is referring to the environment X, which is equal to, to one, right? Um, let me look back at this function. Oh, okay, I see. So, so, so basically, um, in this in this case, now I'm, I'm kind of convincing myself of this result. So, if uh, the, the the expression in this case is, is is just a is just a value, right? And so it it doesn't. There's no interaction with the data. So, so kind of evaluating it against the data. Um, if it's a data variable, it's just kind of what's what is what is the value of this thing, right? Um, in, in in both cases, since it's not it's not interlinked. Like previously, we have this this y which existed in the data. Uh, that was a column of the data frame. So here, you know, this is a way of, with this um, this um, this pronoun that we can kind of resolve this ambiguity of reference. Um, here, you know, this is happening within within a, a parameter of the art or um, uh, with an argument of the function, but you know, you can easily imagine where this would happen within the body of the function itself. In fact, for the people that are kind of working on package development, um, uh, you'll often run into this this problem where you're kind of run, running your <laughs> running your tests with dev tools, and you'll see this this RMD check. Uh, I don't know if it's a warning or an error, but uh, talking about, you know, such and such variable doesn't exist, isn't defined in the global environment. And I always kind of scratch my head and lazily, I just kind of looked up on the dplyr programming reference and it says, use the data pronoun. Okay, problem resolved uh, without really fully understanding what it, what, what it was behind it. But uh, uh, here now I, I understand a lot better that really there's this, 
variable that exists and and you know uh the rmd check was basically kind of helping you protect yourself and more maybe more importantly your users against the possibility that um a very you know, like an object of that name exists in the environment in which the user is evaluating your function and there'd be kind of like name collision um yeah i'll uh i guess i'll stop there see if there are any questions comments Um, yeah, I'm curious. I, I think this is related to the pronouns. Um, what, like, what's it called when you have the dot, but it's not followed by data or environment? Is that just like a global, uh, variable? Um, so, so the book kind of briefly talks about this, uh, Trevin, I, I, I'm not sure I think, I don't feel confident in offering like a, a I can give you an answer, but don't take it for, for gospel. Um, um, the book basically says like that, that having this kind of like dot whatever is simply an, an effort to avoid name collision. Uh, so hence, you know, you, you'll find in, 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 let's say, a lot of per functions, like let's say the map family, you'll have the dot X to avoid collision, let's say, with X, which might exist in the global environment, and the dot F um which exists to, to avoid collision with the, the maybe an f that might exist in the global environment uh so it's a I, I think it's an effort to to do that i don't know if the the kind of the dot makes it makes it anything special i think it's just kind of um it's a convention that's predicated on an assumption that the user won't have you know a, a dot dot data that exists in the environment, even if they may have data. Um, if anyone knows better, uh, please do jump in. Yeah, I couldn't remember if <clears throat> we had already gone over that or um, I, I only looked at parts of this chapter, so I wasn't sure um, if that was in here. One I'd like to look back at, I think there's a, the, the, the names and values chapter uh, where I think there's some rules about the names. Um, maybe the dot whatever the dot name might make it a non syntactic name. I'm not I'm not sure if it will. Um, might be worth looking at, but the in this chapter at least, uh, Hadley makes a point of saying that uh, this dot kind of dot prefix to to the names of arguments is to help with 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 collision with name collision. Um, Um, yeah, another thing that I'm actually reminded of seeing this note here is uh, another thing that can prove really kind of helpful is, uh, I'm trying to remember where in the chapter it mentions this, but uh, there's kind of a certain little syntactic dance you need to, to do in order to have, well, so this is another way of referring to a column, right? So dot date, so instead of dot data dollar sign the name, you can have dot data and then kind of the quoted, uh, you basically have a string. Um, I mean, this is kind of in effect, the equivalent of having whatever the name of the data frame is, and then the subset operator where you're, you're kind of subsetting to a column with that, with that name. Um, let me see if I can quickly search for that. I, unfortunately, I don't remember where in the chapter it comes up against that, but I, I, that's something that's been useful for me in the past too um on occasion it's not something i use all the time but it is it's definitely useful um i think it was in the sim back yeah, here we are this is the one um okay so this is coming kind of coming to the next chapter which unfortunately i didn't really dive into in the presentation um so this, this is kind of a uh Again, kind of dplyr filter setup, if you will. Um, so here you're providing the threshold variable and the threshold value. So let's say you have a data frame, you want to subset to um, you know, see all observations where X is, like for example, here, X is uh, um, 
greater than equal to eight. Um, and so the issue here is that you have this variable that, um, as you can see below, is provided as a bare name. And so you need to kind of make two steps. So number one, you need to take the name and then transform it, oops, sorry, into a symbol. Um, so it's a, it's a bare name um, and you want to transform it into a symbol. From a symbol, you want to transform it into a character string so that at the end of the day, you can refer to a particular variable in this fashion, dot data, and, and then some, you know, think of this as, you know, open quotes, name of the variable, close quotes. Uh, so this is kind of a, <clears throat> another, another pattern that you might, that you might see in, in, in practice. So basically, I have a question. Sure. Um, this uh, uh, dot data uh, bar inside the subset two, it's greater than uh, the val uncoded, uncoded val. Okay, what well, that's, that's um, so the result is that. Uh, uh, I'm not sure why this is necessary, yeah. actually. Um, because I'm quite, it's a number, so I'm not. So uh, anyway, I'm, um, I'm, I use this, um, why in this case I use this, uh, I, I need a symbol, the ensign function? Um, so, I mean, I think one fundamental problem is that, you know, this is an, un, this, this will be a reference to something that it doesn't exist in the, in, in the, in the global environment. It's a, it's a bare name. So, you know, the function, the function, the functional kind of try to evaluate it. So you need to kind of, you need to quote it somehow. Um, and so this is kind of maybe a form of quoting, I guess you're transforming it from a name to a symbol in order. I mean, really this is kind of an intermediary step so that you can use this as string function, which converts a string, so converts a symbol into a character string. Uh, and then you're obtaining, so this will be a character string so that you can, basically put the character string here. So they are referring to a particular variable within, within the data frame. Uh, as I've said, the, my DF to when, when var is uh, greater uh, equal than val. So my DF is from one to 10, and now if, if uh, I set the threshold bar to eight, I have all the values from eight to 10. Yep. Do I need to put this bang bang? Do I? Yeah, that, that's kind of my question too, Federica. Um, I, I, that was kind of one of my first comments is, is, is why I'm not sure if this is necessary. Uh, Because this isn't quoted, I'm not quite sure what what the bang bang does for us here. Because it seems like this. I'm sure there's something I'm missing, but there's some ambiguity. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the, the but but I mean it, you know here like what's clear is it's not being quoted, right? So this is something we're passing kind of passing down into the function into the body of the function. And uh, uh, seems like it says something else afterwards and says uh, it's not always the responsibility of the function order to avoid ambiguity. So imagine the generalized Porter to allow thresholding based on any expression. So they bang bang expression and bang bang val. 
Yeah, so this this makes some sense, I guess, because here we're we're this is a this is a quotient. So we're 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 taking this and we're making it into a quotient, and then we're so basically we're quoting and unquoting, right? Uh, here, here makes sense. But still, still, I'm not sure why I, the bang bang doesn't. I'm gonna have to. I, I'm curious now. I, um, yeah. So I think here it's saying it is not possible to evaluate expert only in the data mask because here, here we're not. We're not providing any. We're not explicitly providing any any. Um, we're not like kind of scoping the evaluation, right? We're not, we're not saying that this 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 symbol should is a reference to a value that exists in the data, right? So we're not explicitly data masking here. We're just we're just uh, unquoting an expression, an arbitrary expression. This this will, I think, resolve the ambiguity. This won't. So if, for example, like if we did the same thing here and X existed in the, yeah, if X existed in the global environment, I'm not sure what it would have. And I, so I think, I think it's, we, we should endeavor to do this. Is a short version. I've not in practice used this, to be very honest. The um, I've not used the environment uh, pronoun. I guess one one way we could have handled actually this. Um, oops, sorry, it was in this chapter, wasn't it? If we dot, if we written dot env val, uh, you know, dollar sign val, then then we would have. Then we would have removed the ambiguity. Maybe we would have restricted the utility of the function, right? Because then we're restricting like val can only be an environment variable. Actually, now one thing I'm thinking about, so I'm thinking on the fly here, uh, is whether whether the pronoun works if it's um, if it's just a just a value right so here we're talking about environment variables what if we have just a value I'm gonna have to tinker with this for, for, for this I, I Coming back to this point, like my intuition is um, somehow this kind of like resolves the reference to val if it exists. I guess like if it's defined as a variable, it resolves the, uh, the reference, but if it's just eight, then it. Then it Sorry, just one second. Sorry about that. Um, solo solo parenting today. Sorry about that. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So coming back to this point of like why bang bang, I my intuition is that it somehow forces evaluation of 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 whatever vowel is. 
So if we refer to a variable, it would evaluate it. But I don't know. Uh, that that intuition could be wrong. <laughs> Thanks, Trevin. Yeah, exactly. Yes, my daughter is here to help me present that. Okay, I think we good. Okay. So let, let's think about that in case we we can uh, like uh, add some other questions next next week. Okay, so who's who who is up next uh, week? Um, I'm I'm presenting for next chapter. Okay. Uh, ah, Kevin. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Great. Thank you very much. And um, if we have nothing else to to add, we can even um, uh, uh, see each other next week. Yeah. Okay. See you next week. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.